Hello everyone, I am John Mark Pontalan, Austria. You can call me Mark or JM. I am 16 years old and will turn 17 this month of October. I'm currently residing in Cainta, Rizal. And statistically speaking, I am part of the Generation Z because I was born on October 18, 2005. Being a member of this generation is like a roller coaster ride for me, and everyone or others would agree on this. With a given emphasis that this generation has been in a spotlight for the past years and this current year because of the ideas, the way we live, and how ge the Generation Z's are being dubbed as a future leaders and the future of this country or the world I rather and also this generation has transitioned from a mixed feelings I must say because a lot has changed since this generation has played a big part on the root of problems that we have today but I still like and cherish being part of this generation Now, I will share my photos when I was a baby from to this day and I will tell something short. The first picture or photo that I will show you is this. This was me with my mom and younger sister. This was captured back on 2008 and this is the, as far as I know, this is my earliest photo during the childhood days that I have because I am a camera shy type of person. The next one is my vacation photo. This is me when we visit my mom's own hometown in Marinduque. This is the only photo of me that I will show you, my own solo photo, because I feel like here I don't have an awkward smile of mine, and because I think I, I was really happy when this was, when this photo, photo was captured because I was excited to visit my mom's hometown. The, on to the next one is this one. A solo picture of mine again yeah this one and I was doing a rock and roll pose here and a bang pose like this one and because I use this I as far as I remember this was popular back then and I was convinced by my aunt and let me find here is my aunt and me and she really influenced me in taking photos in my early, earliest childhood and she has teached me a lot when it comes to digital devices back then. And she was my favorite tita of all. On to the next one is a really fast fast forward picture of mine. Oh, not a picture of mine but a group photo that I took in my earliest high school junior high school days and this this is it as you can see this is me and this picture was taken when I was grade 7 and I studied in Repsi in Pasig and the pictures I uh, the people in this picture uh, are my friends during my high junior high school days in Repsi and for now, we got separated because we have different paths taken, and we don't have we don't have the same same universities when we are studying right now, and but we are still getting in touch with each other. The last photo that I will share with you is my first memories with the JR Jose Rizal University. And this is me with 
my other subscribers. This is me. I'm sorry with the flash. This is me. And I feel like I needed to share this as one of my updated photos because being a part of this school newspaper was one of my greatest achievement in my starting in start in senior high school and this was captured recently last month respectively in September and that's all. Now I will share with you with a day in a life of a senior high school, school student inside Jose Rizal University. As a student, I have built a routine or schedule where I can use my time well and use my skill and abilities to my extent where I can be productive as much as possible. Our school, Jose Rizal University, has implemented a high flex setup for this semester and after months of being in that kind of setup, I was able to adjust well and fix my schedule. A day in my life goes as follows. In the morning, I usually wake up 6 a.m. and takes a cup of coffee or a simple sandwich for breakfast. If my siblings have to attend school, I will wake up at 4 a.m. to help them get ready for school. After that, I would look into my schedules of classes and get myself ready for the first subject that I will have in that day. Most of my, most of my classes are held during the morning so I get really busy during mornings. After morning, lunch or noon, I usually get myself another cup of coffee or a fast meal so I can focus on the upcoming subjects. That, I that will be held in the afternoon. If there's no classes after the morning classes or the morning shift, I use this time as a break. If there's no classes after the morning classes, I use this time as a break and after that, I usually create a flow of work or tasks that I should do within the day or week by listing it. During the afternoon, I make time to accomplish the tasks that should be done within the day such as short activities taking notes updating some project drafts and reading materials and lessons while accomplishing this task i make sure that i am gathered and is in condition in working and i usually eat fruits or snacks while listening to some songs and this makes me more feel like I am accomplishing and this feels productive for me. This time in my day usually takes 4 to 5 hours so after this is already evening. There are also days that after classes there's not much to do so it usually takes 1 to 3 hours so I still have time to catch up with my friends and family. In the evening, after a long day, I use this time as to, re to relax and to help with the chores around the house. This is my rest time after a long day. And my rest time also involves an activity. Yes. <laughs> an activity. I'm in charge in making our dinner every day. So it is my time to use my skills and enhance, and enhance my ability in cooking i usually eat dinner by 8 or 9 pm as i have a routine or interval to follow in eating after that i usually take a hot shower and get myself ready for bed and if i have time i use this as a way of enjoying myself in a way that i spend my time on internet like the social media platforms like facebook twitter Instagram, Tumblr, and any other apps that is in my interests. After a long day, I sleep and make myself get ready again for another challenging day. Just a note and disclaimer, 
This routine only applies during weekdays and sometimes during Saturdays. I make my Sundays for my, free from, from myself of the routine and enjoying my time with my friends and family to preserve my social life. Now, it is time to get to know me and my hobbies. I'm a bookworm and a writer type of person. I really find reading a pleasant time and activity for me. It, it, turn, it, en, en, it entertains me in a way other things can't do. And as for writing, I usually get motivated or I get randomly... How do I say this? I sometimes get randomly... Take an idea or think of an idea or a instance, a situation that I am in and I write poem, stories, short stories and one shots or alternative universes for those Gen Z's who is in Twitter, y'all know this. And also, words are the most important thing or words are only thing to convey one's disposition and emotions in life. I also love to watch video documentaries, cooking shows, and sitcoms. Lastly, I'm fond of rec recreational activities such as listening to music, playing sports, and playing instruments such as drums, keyboard, and other instruments. Back in 2020, I suffered a multiple knee, feet, and muscle pains. This was during the pandemic. I mean the start of pandemic. And this experience planted a trauma on me because I was not able to walk or even stand up for a whole minute. And it, it, I was stuck in that situation for several months. I feel de defeated and it's like a nightmare to me after several checks up checkups i was diagnosed that i have a low blood pressure and low amount of potassium inside my body this adds up to the health diseases that i have i struggle within the first months of my experience and to make this experience and this trauma of mine even more worse and this experience of mine was in the middle of the pandemic and where the online classes are being held and instead of being in the fields of defeat i use this as a motivation to keep moving forward i managed to be able to walk after five months of taking care of myself although it keeps coming back and now a chronic illness inside me during my last years in junior high school, I managed to finish this level uh, with, the, with an achievement. It was truly a test of time and belief to me and I always hope that I will brought this in the future as my motivations. And the bottom line of my experience is take care of yourself and do not don't be too complacent with the things and you have to I think you have to adjust well with the environment and your surroundings as many things really happen quickly to us and nowadays it is I think this is relevant now for my economic development project there's a potential in rural. Being unemployed is such a striker and a big deficit in life. You're not able to buy your basic necessities in your everyday life. As we always hear from our parents or any mentors in life that living in an urban area 
or some urban areas is open opens as much opportunities and life will be much more greater but and just a question and as I contradict as to what I say does this words always come to live take our capital city or the Manila City as an example back in the 1990s many Filipino Filipinos from different regions and provinces start started to fluctuate the city it became much more competitive applying to the top universities and having job is a hard process due to the competitiveness that it has that's why i want to introduce this concept project of mine entitled there's a potential in rural rural by means are areas that don't have sky high buildings and is mostly green farms philippines economic gdp tallies agricultural sectors forestry and fishing industry as one of the main sectors that contributes in our economic growth and econ in our economic growth i want to help our dear farmers fishers and all our local producers by means of helping the government to be more open and see the potential out of these sectors as recently things aren't going way too well with the sectors because of the typhoons and other factors <clears throat> how this will become a reality first i will find a community of local producers that i can help with the initiative plans that i have we can go to the government organizations or even to the non-government organizations to help us get in touch with some potential people that will further help in improve my plan. Next is to create an improved plan that will work for the government. Departments such as Department of Agriculture or the DA and Bureau of Fisheries and Aquatic Resources or the BFAR can help with our with our initiatives and plans with the help help in helping the farmers local producers and our fishers finally after helping one community i should aim more to help others get out of the struggles and stigmas around working and in, in rural rural areas and that's a wrap and i hope you have you have learned something about me and my plans and my experiences in this video and that's all thank you for watching